Hey everybody, Mercedes from the factory team again, and today I'm gonna to show you how to swap a controller. If you don't feel comfortable with working on electronics yourself, just ship it in to us. It's quick and easy, and we'll get it back to you as fast as we can. If you have any questions about it too, always contact our customer service. They're more than happy to help. Let's run through everything that you're gonna to need to do the swap. First thing you'll need is a stand. Of course, you need your controller, a new gasket, new axle bolts, hardware kit, a Torx bit and wrench, 24 millimeter Torx wrench, electric screwdriver, a rag and a pick, just in case your screw holes are a little extra dirty and you wanna write, wipe some dirt off of your board there. A marker so you can mark your screws, some tape so you can tape over your communication wires and electrical wires when you're doing battery work, Phillips screwdriver, security TP20 bit. Well, now that we have all of our parts, we're gonna get started. And the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're actually gonna wanna flip your one wheel over. We're gonna start on the bottom by taking off these bumpers. There we go. While we still have this flipped over, we're gonna go ahead and take care of the cable retainer clip here. We'll flip it over and get the other side. Flip this over now and we'll get the foot pad and the fender delete here. Flip that out. So this motor cable is a little tricky, but you're gonna wanna get it out from behind the rail here, and then you'll unscrew the clip here and pull it straight back. So next we're gonna take out these axle bolts so that we can take the rail off. Now we'll remove these four screws. And that axle block is gonna fall out with your rail, so just keep those together. Okay, now we're ready to get into the controller box. You wanna grab your security T20 bit. For the pint, you're gonna have eight of these little screws. Keep good track of those. Do not lose them. We can go ahead and take this controller lid off now very carefully. You can use the lid. Again, just keep these separate. And you can also see there's something here on the lid. This is a gasket. We're gonna want a new one of these anytime we get into the controller box. This helps keep our our electronics nice and safe. Okay, now that we have this opened up, I just want to give you a gentle reminder. Try not to touch too much in here, uh, if at all, that you need to. Um, I'll show you how to do these cables and stuff, but this is electrical in here, and you don't wanna mess up anything. <laughs> so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take out this communication wire for the battery. And you wanna be careful because there's this little tab on here. You do have to push it in as you pull. It'll just pop right out for you. And for these wires, we're gonna put a little bit of tape on it. And then for this one, we're gonna do two things here. We're gonna use our thumb to push forward, and then we're gonna support the wires with our, our fingers back here. With this, you wanna make sure you're not tugging on those wires, really. You're using, using your thumb to push. And then again, we're gonna cover this with tape. We're gonna unscrew these. And you saw those, those wires turn right there. You see how that turns just a little bit. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take and just support these. That way it doesn't touch anything that's going on in the controller right there. And that way you can unscrew this freely. And now your controller is completely isolated. You have a, a controller attached to one side of the rail. So now we'll, we'll take that off. So this is your old controller, and what we're gonna do, there's one thing that's missing out of every controller when it gets to you from the factory, and that's this little light bar right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take that out of our old controller. We're gonna detach the wires here, and this has the same tab that those communication wires do on the battery cables, and so you're just gonna push that in, and then pull it out. We'll take this little screw out, and there's a little tab here. This holds your light bar in place. Now we can take our little LED light bar out and we'll put this in our new controller. Now with the pint, you have a little bit more wiggle room on this light bar. Just make sure that it's straight up and down as we put our little tab on there. Now that we have it screwed in and it's properly set, we can go ahead and plug it back in here. And there we go. We're ready to install this back on our board. So we'll go ahead and set it here and 
We don't want anything to happen to this controller, so we'll support it the whole time until it's actually screwed into a rail at the very least. Okay, now that your controller is secured back to the rail, we can put in your battery cables. Okay, now that you've finger tightened this gland, you're gonna come in with a Torx wrench. Okay, now with your battery cable reinstalled, you can go ahead and reinstall your cords. Once you have the battery plugged back into the controller, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a test just to make sure that it still turns on. Okay, we see here that the light bar is working, front lights are working, and the back lights are working. So we're all set to go. We'll turn that off and we'll finish the rest of our work. So as I mentioned before, you're gonna wanna grab yourself a new gasket um, and we're just gonna make sure that this lines up properly. We'll go ahead and put the lid on here. Start in kind of a, a star or a square pattern. Um, but the main thing is do four screws around the controller box and then you can go in and tighten all the way around as you go. Now that you have all of your screws into your controller box, you're just gonna wanna double check again. This is a safety precaution. There's a lot in the controller and a lot that you're risking with the controller, so you just wanna always make sure that it's taken care of. Okay, so we're ready to put our rail on. And with the rail, it's pretty easy. Keep your axle block with it. And then this little notch right here, you're just gonna make sure that that's lined up with a little notch that's on the motor. Now that that's aligned, we can use our new axle bolts. Okay, we have the axle bolts back in. We'll go ahead and put these four screws that are in the controller box and the battery in. Okay, the rail is completely attached again. We can go ahead and flip this over. Reattach our motor cable here. Whenever you're putting either your motor cable in or you're taking it out, you wanna be very careful that you don't break this little piece right here. We do sell them on our website, just in case you do, but to ensure that you don't, we pulled out the cable when we removed it and we pulled straight back on the cable and we're gonna reinsert it the exact same way that we removed it. And we'll align it straight, plug it in, Make sure you have a little wiggle room in this clip right here. Push it all the way in, and then you can tighten this down. Now that it's all plugged in and tightened, you can go ahead and push this cable back in, and we'll put our little cable retainer clips back on. Alrighty, we'll go ahead and get our foot pads on. Now we'll flip it over, We'll get this front foot pad plugged in. Last but not least, they're bumpers. Okay, folks. Fender delete. Thanks for watching, guys. This is a controller swap video. We have battery and motor too. If you need to swap any of those components, go give our page a, a little look-see. If you have any questions, please always feel free to reach out to customer service. They're more than happy to help you. And um, I don't know, go ride.